In this video, we're going to be looking at four parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared and visible light. You'll be able to place the different types of electromagnetic radiation in order. You'll know what the electromagnetic waves have in common. You'll be able to list different uses for radio waves, microwaves and infrared and visible light. You'll be able to give brief explanations of why each type of electromagnetic wave is suitable for what it's used for. And in those explanations, you'll be able to apply the key terms emitted, transmitted, absorbed and reflected. Remember, white light can be split into all the colours of the spectrum using a prism and refraction. Red light has a larger wavelength and violet light has a smaller wavelength. And light is one part of the electromagnetic spectrum and it's the only part that we can detect with our eyes. Now in order to sort out the other types of electromagnetic radiation I always like to look at visible first because infra means lower than and below red is infrared it's got a lower frequency and a larger wavelength. Going back towards the lower frequencies we've then got microwave and finally, the biggest wavelength is radio wave. So coming this way, as we move this way, we're carrying more energy. Ultra means above, so above violet, we get ultraviolet. Then we have X-rays that carry even more energy, and finally gamma rays that have the highest frequency, the shortest wavelength, and carry the most energy. Now, all electromagnetic waves have some key things in common that you need to know. First of all, they all travel at the same speed through a vacuum. That's the speed of light. Secondly, they're transverse waves. Remember, they oscillate at right angles, the direction in which they're traveling. And finally, they all transfer energy from the source, like a light bulb or a heater um, or a mobile phone, to the absorber, like your eyes or your skin. So let's start by looking at radio waves and microwaves. Both of these are used for communications and um, have a look at this animation I've done to find out why. So if we want to transmit microwaves or radio waves from the earth we first need a transmitter or aerial. Long wave radio reflects off the atmosphere back down to earth so is used to transmit radio signals around the world. Short wave radio doesn't reflect off the atmosphere it gets absorbed by it, so it can only be used for radio communications locally and also for TV. So what type of electromagnetic waves are used to communicate with satellites? The much shorter wave microwaves with a higher energy can be transmitted through the atmosphere to the satellite and then sent back down to Earth. Microwaves can be used for both mobile phone communications to satellites and also for satellite TV. Now, one key bit you need to know for the higher paper is how an aerial works. So you have a transmitter that has alternating current and that makes electrons vibrate at the same frequency which produces radio waves that then force electrons to vibrate in this aerial causing an alternating current of the same frequency in the receiver. Now I've done an animation for you which helps a bit more to see this. As you can see, the alternating current is forcing the electrons to move up and down, producing a radio wave of the same frequency which induce or produce uh, vibrations in the electrons here, making an alternating current of the same frequency. So microwaves have a wavelength of about three centimetres and we've already seen they're used for mobile phones. They only use two frequencies for that and we also know we use them for ovens. A particular frequency is used for ovens and we're going to see now why. In this video you're going to see somebody vibrating a glass uh, using sound waves and each object has a particular resonant frequency 
And if you force an object to vibrate at its resonant frequency, it absorbs all the energy that that sound wave has. Look what happens. Here's a slightly more dangerous demonstration. What I've got here is I've got a signal generator to make some noise, it goes to an amplifier and comes out with this rather strange looking loudspeaker. So let's put some sound on. For this experiment, Trevor needs to generate a specific frequency. He puts little bits of paper on the rim of the glass and he knows when he has reached the correct frequency when the paper jumps off the rim. As with all experiments dealing with loud noises, ear defenders should always be worn. Here it is again in slow motion. That has to be one of my favourite films. Um, what I want you to do now is have a look at this animation I've done, uh, which explains how microwaves cook food. You need to have to use the key terms emit, transmit, reflect and absorb if you have to explain it in an exam. You don't have to know in detail how a microwave oven works, but you do need to know um, and use the terms emitted, transmitted, which means passing through, reflected and absorbed. And so a microwave oven is an ideal example of these things. The magnetron at the top emits the microwaves. Metals reflect microwaves. That's why the case is made out of metal, to reflect them back in so they don't come out and cook us. The glass bowl transmits the microwaves, allows them to pass through into the food. The food then absorbs the microwaves and the food heats up from the inside. So how do microwaves cook food? Well, all foods contain fat and water molecules. And at one particular frequency, the water and fat molecules absorb the energy carried by the microwaves. This causes them to vibrate more and so heat up the food from the inside. Finally, microwaves should pass through the glass of the door and start cooking you. But if you look really closely, you'll see that there's a wire mesh inside the glass and this absorbs the microwaves, keeping you safe. What an ingenious design. So let's now have a look the infrared. Infrared has got the wavelength of about the size of our red blood cell and we know we use it for cooking and heating. We also use it for remote controls and finally we also use it for infrared cameras because every object gives out infrared radiation. So instead of the camera being sensitive to light it's sensitive to infrared so you can see at night time. All objects emit some infrared radiation, however, as an object gets hotter, it emits more infrared radiation of a higher frequency and so carries a greater amount of energy. Have a look at these two images taken by an infrared camera and see if you can work out what they are. Well, the first one, if you got it, was a hairdryer. The next one, not many people get, I'll give you another clue, uh, no heat is being given by this circular thing wrapped around the hand. It's cold blooded. It is a snake wrapped around somebody's wrist. 
you also need to know two required practicals for infrared. The first one is proving that silver surfaces reflect infrared heat energy and dark surfaces, uh, max black surfaces, absorb infrared. This is a really simple experiment. All you need is an infrared heat lamp, a stop clock, a thermometer um, and some black and silver paper. You first wrap some black paper around the bottom of the um, thermometer and then you set your heat lamp at a set distance, turn on the stopwatch and record um, the temperature rise in let's say five minutes. You then repeat it but with silver wrapped around the bulb instead and of course you'll find the black absorbs the heat energy more as the temperature rises more. That's it. The only thing you've got to remember in your exam is to say that that is your control variable. The distance must be kept the same. The second practical is looking at which surfaces are good at emitting infrared radiation. So this is what's called a lenses cube. Uh, it's just like a biscuit tin, um, but it's painted uh, matte black, matte white, shiny black, and shiny silver. And you've got to make it hot. So what you do is you pour boiling water into it. Uh, that heats the surface up really fast and they start to emit infrared radiation. The only thing you need is your infrared detector that will detect the infrared giving off. And all you do is you keep the distance between each surface identical and you take your detector around to see which surfaces are giving off the most infrared energy. You'll find that matte black gives off the most, then should be shiny black, uh, then matte white, and then finally shiny silver. Because matte surfaces, as well as being good absorbers of infrared, are also very good emitters of infrared as well. Finally, light. Well, light, of course, we see with light, but actually there's one other thing you need to know. Um, fibre optic cables uh, send light down the fibre optic by total internal reflection. So we can send signals down the fibre optics using light, and that's what happens in broadband. So, have a quick go at some of these questions, pause each question, and then I'll go through it in a minute. So of course, I hope you got gamma rays for the first bit. And the second bit, of course, microwaves are transmitted through the atmosphere to reach a satellite. Well, the only one that's correct is the frequency increases and the wave speed stays the same. Now, if you have a look carefully, protractors have a resolution, that's the key term we need to use, which is much, much bigger. So that's our first point out of two, um, which means that it can't measure the difference between these because there is hardly any difference between them. It can only measure to the nearest degree, a normal protractor, so it wouldn't show any difference between them. The second one, What's the conclusion between the relationship? Well, you've got to remember that red has a much larger wavelength and blue has a smaller wavelength, like infrared, ultraviolet. They're testing you know that in order to further do the conclusion. So, as the wavelength decreases, the angle of refraction also decreases. Finally, glass doesn't transmit ultraviolet, so there's only other two other things that can happen. And it says suggest, which means that your teacher probably wouldn't have told you this. It's not stated in the specification, but it's getting you to use your ideas and your understanding of the science to work it out. So it is either absorbed or reflected. Now this was the practice I was talking about earlier, and you can see how they're using it in the exam paper. So have a read of this. Then I'll click on the questions and, and then go through the answers.
So the first one, suggest the risk of harm. This is a one mark question. It's quite easy. The only harm is going to be the heat from this, so don't touch it. Or you could use gloves, heat proof gloves, to touch it. What's the control variable? We discussed that earlier. It's the distance between the detector and the cube. Make it clear what the distance is between. Now this question here, what does precise readings mean? Well, precise reading means readings, repeat readings that are close together. So that's one mark because they're looking to see that you understand that they haven't repeated the readings, so therefore they can't tell whether they're precise. And finally, this part here, explain what would happen if the resolution was one degree. Well, have a look. If this was one degree, then that would be 66, and that would be 66. So you wouldn't be able to tell any difference between that and shine that. So I hope you were successful with those questions and they were helpful. Finally, let's just very quickly recap on what we've done. We've looked at part of the electromagnetic spectrum. We started with visible light, the only part that we can detect with our eyes. We looked at red being the bigger wavelength, infra being lower than. We've looked at violet being the higher wavelength of visible light, ultra being higher than that. We've looked at the use of radio waves, microwaves, infrared and visible light and we've seen that all of them have the, these common features. One, they travel at the same speed, which is the speed of light. They're all transverse waves and they all transfer energy from the source to the absorber. In the next lesson, we're going to be looking at these three, ultraviolet, x-rays and gamma rays. All of these carry more energy and, they can, and the energy goes up as the frequency goes up. And these have clear risks to them because all of them ionise cells and so can increase risks of cancer.